Hey, what's shaking, homies? So today, I just want to do a little update video on my Alpha Wise U20. So I've had this for about six weeks now, and since I've had it, I do this thing like whenever I get a new printer, I primarily just use that printer until it either gives me problems or, you know, or I get a new printer and I start using that one. Uh, since I've got this one, I kind of haven't really been reviewing printers. I got so many right now, I got to try to make some room before I review any more. So I've just been kind of playing with this one uninterrupted. And this printer is a freaking beast. It is just awesome. I absolutely love the touch screen display. It's so easy to maneuver all the settings and start your prints and everything. But the main thing is this thing, I haven't done a single modification besides these bed leveling screws. And my prints come out great on this thing. Um, if, you're, if you're somebody that's really into ABS, well, this might not be the printer for you. But for PLA and PLA hybrids like wood, carbon fiber, all that stuff, this thing prints amazing. It is just, like, I, I am blown away because this printer is extremely cheap. Gearbest has it on sale right now and they hooked it up with a coupon code and with both of those, it's only $279. Um, for this giant build volume, um, it's got a nice glass bed. There is a piece of build tack type stuff over it, which I really like. Uh, everything sticks to it almost too good. I don't even, I, first couple times I used glue stick and then I realized you don't even need to with this stuff. Um, yeah, it prints awesome. The single lead screw, I kind of like because you don't have to like, with the double, like the CR-10S, you've got to adjust them both and it, it, it's really finicky. This one, I've leveled the bed once when I got it, maybe twice. I don't think I've, like I've leveled, I haven't leveled the bed in probably four weeks. <laughs> so, and my prints are coming out beautifully. I'll show you some in a second. Um, but the main reason why I wanted to do an updated review is because since I've got this, they've already came out with two new firmware packs. So the last firmware pack was awesome and it, it actually changed the whole interface. It gave you new setting options. I'll, I'll go through that. I'll show you all the new stuff you got on there. But then today they came out with an even newer one, which is basically just like a lot of bug fixes, and making it run a little smoother, stuff like that. But yeah, this printer is just a freaking beast. It's got the filament runout sensor. It's got the power resume if you accidentally turn it off or your house gets struck by lightning and the power goes out or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, this thing is just freaking awesome. So I'll show you guys how to update the firmware because they made it so stupid easy and idiot proof on here that it's the easiest printer I've ever had to update the firmware. You don't need to mess with Arduino or anything like that. Um, but first, let me just show you some of these prints. So I've been into spin tops lately, so I started, I got I got this roll of glow-in-the-dark PLA. It's like some type of PLA hybrid. So I started messing around with that, and uh, yeah, I'm just getting phenomenal results. So this was the first one I kind of printed with um, some bad settings, and you can see it's, it had a lot of stringing, but the spin top itself is awesome. These, um, they can take metal Yo-Yo Factory tips. I did not design these. I'll put the Thingiverse users on the screen. But yeah, this one, after I honed in the settings, like, look at how clean that is. Like, it's perfect. Um, same thing with, this one was, like, kind of the one I did in between. So it's like, first I did this, kind of tweaked my settings, then I got this one, and then lastly I came out with this one. But just with the white PLA, check this out. This Skull Trooper turned out a made or Death Trooper, whatever it is. I'll put the Thingiverse user's name on the screen for this, too. Um, this thing came out freaking absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, I am absolutely loving it, just stock as it is. Um, I thought this fan was gonna, I was gonna have to replace the fan, but it actually, the way it is, how it's got this like, it, I don't know, it's, it's the way the fan is positioned, it actually works really good, I thought. Usually stock fans, that's like the first upgrade you do. Um, maybe I'll try out some other ones if someone designs one, but as of right now, I don't really see, see the need to. Um, I switched using the TiVo Tornado spool holder, which I really like, but yeah, I think this is by far the best deal you can get. For under $300, you're getting a CR-10 build volume um, with some of the bells and whistles of the CR-10S, which is like five. The CR-10S is way more expensive. It's like, you can buy like two of these for the price of one CR-10S. So, I mean, that's just freaking incredible. You could, if you want to print ABS, you could. Um, I would just recommend modifying it by like uh, insulating the bed so it heats up faster. And you, I'm sure you could do ABS then, but uh, stock right out of the box, you can't print ABS. Um, just because it, it, the bed, I can't get the bed over like 80, 85. Um, so maybe some ABS is you could, but the really high temp ones, you're gonna have trouble on here. But other than that, I mean, this printer is freaking awesome. So um, yeah, let me show you guys 
how easy it is to update the firmware. So we'll go on my computer right now. I'll show you guys how to maneuver through the touch screen and um, just how, what the touch screen looks like now, now that they changed everything. And uh, yeah, and that'll be about it. So let's go to my computer. Let's put in the newest firmware that came out today and let's have at it. Okay guys, so this is extremely easy. So I'm gonna show you the steps. So first, uh, if you're on Facebook, I recommend adding the Alphawise U10 and U20 3D printer group. Here's where the files were posted originally. And they take all, this company actually takes a lot of input from what people say. And uh, it's just really cool to see a company that actually cares. So you're going to click that. And I'll put the direct link to here. But it's going to bring you to the newest firmware update. So you're going to download all the files. So once you download it, you'll have it um, wherever you did it. I did to my desktop. And then you're going to want to extract it. So I got it extracted right here. I already got it open here. Okay, so you're going to need these two files. You're going to need the UI and the .bin file. The other things are just uh, directions on how to do this. So you can always read that if you want. And then you want your SD card to be formatted with nothing on it. So I took all the files off of it. I'm going to take these two files and drag them to my SD card. Okay, it's as simple as that. And then I'm just going to put this SD card in my printer and turn the printer on. The printer will automatically update. And uh, then you, once it updates, you're going to want to delete these files and before you put on any G codes because your printer will then update every time if you don't take these off. Okay, so we're going to take this SD card, pop it up in the printer, and uh, you'll see it in a second. Okay, guys, so I got the SD card, so I'm just going to pop it in right here on the side. Okay, then you're going to just turn your printer on and it will automatically update. See, here first it'll do one line. And I think it does one more actually. Or is it just, yeah, see, there's one on the bottom. This is it updating. So, really easy that you don't have to hook it up to Arduino or, you know, configure Marlin or do it through Cura. You just do it right here on the SD card. So, very, very cool. So, my dog keeps bumping into my tripod. Okay, so now here we got, now we got move head so you can move. Just like this, this is really cool. So you can home it, you know, just want to home the corners. You can use this. Um, you just want to go left and right. I'll move the Z up and down. So really nice. Uh, also too, you can disable the steppers with the unlock key. Uh, really cool how they changed that up. Okay, let's go back. Okay, the files here is where, you know, here I got just those ones, which I need to delete so I can put on my files I'm gonna print. But if you had, that's where you find those. Um, your extruder settings. Um, you can adjust your feed rate, um, you can even, ret uh, the retraction settings, um, really cool, and the heat obviously, uh, the leveling, the assisted leveling, and also you can disable the steppers with the unlock key. Um, this is the power recovery, so say I started a print and I turned off the printer, I turn it back on, hit the recovery, and it'll ask if I want to recover the last file, yeah, and then for more, here we got more. Um, in the settings, here's where they really put the most things. We got uh, like acceleration, all our different jerk settings. Um, and then you can also save these settings like permanently, so like it's configured like that. Um, you know, let's go through all these. Material check. And then we hit, what does this do? You can res uh, restore to factory settings with that one. This one at the top, I'm not quite sure what that, that does. The about just kind of tells you the little facts about the printer. But yeah, just uh, really cool. Um, I think it works great. Touch screen is, you know, it's 2018, we need touch screen on everything. But yeah, really cool. I think that just how easy it is to update the firmware and very excited to get printing with it with the new firmware. Okay guys, hopefully the firmware update process seemed easy enough for you and you could understand what I was saying. But yeah, stupid easy. Really cool that they actually care and uh, they continue to improve the product. A lot of these companies, they make their product, they put it out there, and they're like, oh, if they like it, they like it. They don't like it, they don't like it, they're stuck with it. But no, they, they're they really trying to improve, make things better. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this printer, I would, honestly, I, did, I wasn't expecting the greatest things out of it when I got it, but I really like this thing. Nothing's broken yet, knock on wood. I haven't had a single problem. It's extremely reliable, and it prints great. So what else could you ask for? At $279, uh, this this might be the printer that you want to pick up. You know, it's definitely the biggest printer that's actually good for that price range. The Troxy X3S, 
that thing was a pain. I, I actually got rid of that one. The A9E12, I had to modify the crap out of the bed before it even printed good. This thing, it's ready to go, bada bing, bada boom, and you're printing. So, thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked the video. And I gotta go take my dog out, and I'll see you later.